Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's bite size talk. Um, if anyone is interested to ever give a bite size talk, please contact me on Slack. We are always happy for new speakers. And um, of today's topic, um, we're looking at using um, CLI client for GitHub and VS Code when working with Git um, with Phil. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and thanks for intro, Fan. Um, yeah, please do jump in if you have any ideas for NF Core Talks or would like to talk about a pipeline you're working on or just anything you're interested in really please do uh, give us a shout on the nf course slack we've got the bite-sized channel and uh, we're always looking for people to new speakers and new topics and even just ideas for topics is great to have uh, we kind of keep a big list of things and we try and rotate through them but um we've we've got a bit low on ideas because we've had <laughs> lately which is why you've got me talking to you today with another kind of slightly last minute topic um but, but it's, it's, it's a bit fun. And this is one that has been bouncing around for a little while. Um, the topic today is using Git and GitHub and different ways of kind of interacting uh, with that and managing your workflow. It's a topic I've been quietly ignoring for as long as I possibly could, because um, I think it's a bit of a Pandora's box. The way that you interact with Git and the way that you have these workflows is a very personal thing. Everyone tends to have their own preferred way of doing things, their own setup. It depends on uh, what your preferences are, whether you like graphical tools or command line tools. It depends on how long you've been using these tools, how familiar you are with them. Uh, it depends what order you learn things in and like what tools were available when. So this is by no means an authoritative guide whatsoever. I don't expect anyone else to end up with the same workflow as me, but it's just to give you a taste of some of the different tools which are available, talk through a little bit of when you might find them useful and, and why. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe we can have a lively discussion at the end where you guys all chime in and say, oh, there's a much better way to do that. Don't ever do it that way because that's terrible. <laughs> um, and hopefully uh, we we'll, we'll might even have another talk or two queued up after this uh, where people go into other workflows and maybe talk about other ways to do things. I know that Edmund had some some fancy ideas uh, with tools that I'm not familiar with. Okay, sorry, I'm rambling. Let's get on with it. So um, this, there's basically not really any slides for this talk. It's just me freestyling it. Um, so we'll crack on and I'm gonna start off by, okay, there's like two slides. I dug out these old slides from a talk in 2010, an in-person hackathon just to do a quick, quick, quick recap of what is Git and what, what does the terminology mean? Just for any of you who are watching, you might be kind of fairly new to this. So Git is a source version control software or source code software version handling user, whatever set of words in a different order. Basically, when you're writing code, you can keep control of the history of the files of the code you're working, and you can collaborate with others using this tool. So uh, with Git, you um, you uh, have a repository, uh, which is your project, and then you have all the code within it. And each time you do some work, you kind of hit a checkpoint and you you check you can make a commit, which is like a bundle of work. And you keep working and you make another commit and another commit, and each of those commits is like a point in time and a history. <laughs> with Git, you can also branch at any point where you kind of go off and work on two different things side by side. Um, and you can also then merge those branches back in together. And so this is typically used if you're multiple people working on one repository or if you're working on different features in parallel. And it's basically always good practice to work on a branch um, so that you don't end up kind of, especially if you're waiting for other people to review a certain bit of code or something, you can work on things asynchronously. Um, repositories can also be forked. Um, which basically means you make a copy of a repository from one account to another on, on GitHub, for example. So um, here I've made a, a fork of a NF core repository to my own personal account, and that duplicates everything, but it also GitHub knows that my fork came from that one. Um, and when I'm using Git locally, uh, the Git client can interact with the different um, remote, remote repositories, which are sat on GitHub rather than on my computer. Um, so I can then do development on my own fork and a bit like working on a different branch, I can then make a, a pull request to merge those changes back into the original repository, which I ca came from, which is usually called the upstream repository. Okay. 
that was Git. <laughs> the quickest intro you've ever seen. Hopefully, basically everyone that's watching is fairly familiar with Git already. Um, so uh, to do today's talk, I thought I would just basically do some work with you guys. Just let's just live do it. I'm going to start off using VS Code. Um, and then uh, then afterwards, I'm going to introduce you to the GitHub uh, command line interface with the CLI tool uh, and touch on a couple of different ways that I personally use it. Um, all of the stuff with VS Code, there's this uh, documentation page, which I found. So I'm just going to pop the link into the Bite Size channel in Slack because um, it, it talks in more detail about the stuff I'm going to talk about now and how to use Git within VS Code because there's, there's a lot of stuff you can do. Um, so if in doubt, go and check that out and, and don't listen to me. Um, but the work, first thing I'm going to do is I found this bite size talk from a, a couple of weeks ago where Chris gave a really nice talk about using custom scripts in Nextflow. And I noticed that uh, Fan does an amazing job of, of bite size maintenance, but she hasn't yet added the YouTube URL to the web page. So I found something to do. Uh, the video is on, on YouTube, but it's not linked into that page. So nice, simple thing for us to do. You can just jump in and add this URL. So I'm going to copy that YouTube URL. And then on the NF Core website, you can always just scroll down to the bottom to find the URL of the source file, which the web page is generated from, uh, or you can click the edit button. I'm going to click the edit button. This takes us to github.com, and I'm now looking at the markdown file here. Um, I could actually just edit this directly in GitHub, but that's not very much fun. So I'm going to do this first bit using Gitpod, uh, which I previously, we've got a couple of talks about using Gitpod. Um, and it's actually the main reason that I started using VS Code to manage Git rather than command line, because when you're running in a Gitpod environment, um, it's you're, you're kind of in VS Code by default, basically, um, and everything is there for you. So I've just spun up. Uh, a new environment. If you're not familiar with with VS with Gitpod, it's basically running on Gitpod servers now, uh, and I'm I'm in in VS Code, and it's just pulling all the code for me here. So it was Markdown Events 2023, not 2022, sorry. And what was the file called? Bite Size Custom Scripts. There we go. Uh, and you can see up here, I think the other ones will have yeah, YouTube embed. So that's the change I'm going to make. Uh, embed and just paste the YouTube URL. Maybe it should be the proper one like that, not a short one. Okay, that's my change. It's pretty simple. Um, what next? So um, I actually have a terminal down here, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Um, so at the moment, I'm working on just the main master branch of, uh, of the repository. That was what's selected here. When I launched um, Gitpod, I could equally be running on a, um, on a local clone of a repository that I've cloned manually. But anyway, I'm on the master branch. In fact, you can see it down here in Gitpod, in, in VS Code. Um, so if it, and the main thing I'm going to be using here is this button on the left-hand side of VS Code called Source Control. If I click on here, this is where I sort of manage all the changes I'm doing and interact with Git. And this is the same if you're working locally or Gitpod. Forget about the Gitpod thing for now. So um, the first thing I want to do is I want to make this on a feature branch. Like I said, I don't want to do it directly on master. Um, so I'm going to, you can either click this, you can see it came up with this option there, create a new branch. And you can also do it through this drop down menu. So branch, and I'm going to do create branch. I'm going to do bite size. Add YouTube. Okay. Now you can see that has changed down here now, and now I'm running on a different, uh, different branch, which is just local. Now, when you're using Git, you have different um, kind of phases of using uh, files, and the first thing is when you, um, when you're when you've made a change to a file, uh, it's called like unstaged, and I need to first stage that file so it's ready to be committed, and then I do the commit. So you can see down here, it says there's some changes here, but it's nothing is actually staged for a commit yet. So first things first, I can double click on this and it shows loads up a diff, a diff viewer. So I can see what's changed in that file, which is really, really nice to be able to just quickly double check what's changed and make sure that it looks as I expect. So that looks good. And then I'm gonna hit this plus button. And it says stage changes. Oop, and it pops from changed up to stage changes. You can imagine I could have lots and lots of files here under change. And then I just stage the ones I want to. 
and uh, I can unstage it again. And I have a feeling you can either be sort of clever about staging parts of the file and stuff within uh, within VS Code if you want to. So I'm going to stage that, and then I'm going to type up here a commit message. I did YouTube well to bite size, and when I hit commit, great. That has now done git add to add the files, and it's done git commits to make uh, commits, but it's still on the, the local copy of the repository, which I have on, on Gitpod. Uh, it doesn't yet, Git, GitHub doesn't yet know about it. So the next thing to do is I'm going to click publish branch, which is going to push this new branch that I created back to, to GitHub. There we go. That's gone. And it's even come up with a little thing saying, do I want to create a pull request? First, I'm just going to show you on the NF core repository here. Look, it's seen I've created a new branch here. So that's correctly gone to GitHub. Oh, I was too slow. I could have clicked create um, GitHub. Right. That's the end of the Git source control part of VS Code. The source control bit is pretty blunt. It works with basically any like GitLab or Bitbucket or anything. It does not specific to GitHub. The next part then is specific to just uh, GitHub within VS Code. And that comes down to this next one here. Now, I can't actually remember if this is a plugin for VS Code or if it just comes with a vanilla install, because it's basically always been there since I first started using VS Code. Um, so I'm not sure. I have a feeling it's part of vanilla, vanilla VS Code. I'm going to click GitHub, and it gives me a whole bunch of stuff to hit do here. I can navigate the pull requests for this repository and the issues and look at all of these uh, as if I was kind of browsing the um, the, the the website itself, I think. I don't do this very often, you can kind of tell. Um, so you go, I can open up like description as if I was browsing GitHub without going off to the website. Um, but right now what I want to do is I want to create a new pull request and I'm going to do that by clicking up here. I could, of course, do all this through the GitHub web interface, which is personally what I actually usually do. So I usually go in and hit compare and pull request and do it through GitHub. But this is about VS Code, so I'm going to do it in VS Code. Right, the interface looks pretty similar to the web. I'm saying, where is it coming from? It's coming from this repository from this branch I just created. And I want it to go into the master branch. And uh, I'm going to add a title for the pull request and a description. And you can see, excuse me, again, we've got the changes down here. And I can double click and look at those changes and again, see the diff. Right, that is done. What do I do now? I've forgotten. Where's the button? Create. I'm blind. Uh, you can see I could create it as a draft if I want to, um, but I'm just going to hit create. And off it goes, and it's created a pull request. It's now opened up pull request also within VS Code. And you can say it's like a similar thing where I can leave comments and, and assign reviewers and everything. And of course, it looks just like the, the native GitHub um, interface here. That's it. Without leaving VS Code, I've just made changes up here. I added them in source control, made a new branch, committed them, pushed that branch. And then in the GitHub interface, I then created a new pull request. Um, and it's ready for someone else to review and merge. Pretty cool. OK, um, you can also then see that I can do reviewing of other people's pull requests. And that's going to be what I come on to next. It's what a big part of being part of a community is about, not just doing your own work and pushing it to other people, but also looking at other people's code, reviewing it, and, and merging it in. And so you can see within the GitHub tab here, again, I can also see all these pull requests um, and kind of look through them. And it's the same as looking at the list within GitHub. But it also, you have some different views, such as waiting for my review and assigned to me and stuff. So I can also look at uh, Fan's pull request here, uh, see the changes that she made, um, and um, see whether I agree with her pull request and stuff. Um, right, what was I going to do with this next? I think this might be where... Yeah, okay, I was going to update this um, to the to the local branch. So uh, one more thing about this on VS Code before I go on, which is um, within VS Code, you also have a terminal browser, terminal, new terminal. So if you want to, you can still do the Git stuff that you might be more used to uh, in the terminal down here within VS Code. So which is good if you're limited to using VS Code on Gitpod or whatever. So I can still do Git status. 
um, and get like it and check out master because you can see I'm still on this feature branch down here. Um, master. So you have both of those options when you're working within VS Code. Um, yeah, so next thing I'm going to start talking, I'm going to, I'm going to, that's as far as I'm going to go with, with VS Code. You can do lots more stuff in VS Code. Um, there's also a lot of really cool plugins, which I'm not really going to talk about. One of the ones which is very commonly used is called Git Lens, which is really powerful. Um, and it's, you can just do like absolutely tons of stuff with it. Uh, it has lots of cool analysis. One of the things I quite like is, um, if you have it installed, oh, this is on Gitpod. Hang on. I open up VS Code for this is my local VS Code now running with some, a local repository. If I look at a file and if I ho hover over a line long enough, um, Git Lens should. It's not going to do it. Okay, and maybe I've disabled it or something. I think I have a feeling I might have disabled it the other day, but it will show up a history of that line of code, which is pretty cool. Something else I can do. Uh, sorry, I keep thinking of things as I go along. These buttons up here. Uh, these will actually walk you through the history of a file as well. So I can click that button. Uh, that's why it's because there's no history. OK, I'm not quite sure what's going on in this live demo, but it's clearly not working. But usually, if you click these buttons, you can walk through the history of that file uh, through the different commits and see what changes each time, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't quite know what I've done to Git Lens, but it's really unhappy. <laughs> Apologies. Right. Next up, GitHub command line. I'm a bit of a command line junkie, um, so I quite like this. Um, and this has been a real game changer for me, this command line tool. Um, typically, when you're working with Git on the command line, you'll be used to doing things like, um, just going to switch to my fork here, so you can do, doop. you'll be used to doing things like, um, git clone uh you know to clone a repository you do git clone blah 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 uh and to do you do git add git commits and all these commands with git that's not what i'm talking about the git command line is obviously central to working on the command line this is the github command line which is gh and this is specifically for interacting with github so first thing is that differentiation um, you can just do brew install if you're on a Mac, but it's pretty easy installation. Um, and if I do gh minus minus help, uh, it tells you about how to use it. I think one of the first things you have to do is you have to do uh, gh auth, which just opens up a window to log into GitHub. Once you have the GitHub command line installed, you can do some stuff really, really nicely. One of my favorite things is you can clone repositories using a gh uh, command instead of a git. And this basically just does git clone, but it's a little bit more clever. It's especially useful when you're working on a fork. So this is my personal fork of uh, the uh, the NF Core website here. You know, if I'm in a I'm in a blank uh, directory here, uh, if I do uh, copy that command I just pasted, it's going to clone that uh, that repo for me. Exactly the same as if I did uh, git clone. Ooh, sorry, I should use a smaller repository. There we go. And, and if I go into that directory, it looks exactly the same as if I didn't get done get clone. But one of the clever things it's done is it has already set up two remotes for me. So it knows about my, my forks origin remote, which is what Git would have done if I just cloned it normally. But it's also, because it was a GitHub um, client, knows that I forked this from the main NF core repository. So it's already created a, a separate remote called upstream, which is just really helpful because it's just one fewer step and it's just there and it's just easier. So that's one of the simplest things you can do with GitHub. Um, what else can you do? You can basically do everything you would do in the, on the web through a command line with the, with the GitHub um, command line. So you can do GitHub uh, repo, and it knows, I mean, current directory is in a cloned GitHub repository, so it knows which repository I'm talking about. And I can do gh repo view. It says, ask me which does, does that once, says which one's there. there. And now I'm looking at the repo for this. Um, that's cool. I can do minus minus web and it basically always just opens a tab in your browser. It's a really quick way to get there from a command line. Now, one of the most powerful things you can do with the GitHub command line is work with um, pull requests. So I'm finally, after lots of waffling, going to get on to reviewing a pull request by Fran here. 
Now, I've looked at her pull request. Uh, she's done some, added some nice stuff here. It's a nice transcript for another bite-sized talk. She's added in the URL for YouTube nicely. Uh, this all basically looks great and good to go. Um, however, one thing I've noticed is that it's, this pull request has got out of date with the main branch. So other things have been merged in and her branch is now sort of behind the head. It's probably fine to merge as it is, but let's just update it quickly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go use GH and I can do GHPR's list if I wanted to. Oop. GHPR list, um, and I can see all the pull requests listed. So if I wasn't sure about the name, I could do it through a command line. And I can also do GHPR view uh, the, the number of fans um, pull requests, and it shows me this on the command line as well. So a bit like VS Code, you can do all the web stuff that you're maybe used to doing through github.com and the terminal if you want to do it on the terminal. But the one I'm going to use is I'm going to do GHPR checkout and the name of this pull request. Now, what this does is it takes fans code and it checks out into a new branch locally. And now in my uh, working directory, I have all the files with her changes. Um, what I could do is I can, if I open up VS Code now, I can actually make changes to the things she's done. Let's see if I can do anything which is pretty non-destructive. Um, what can I do which doesn't matter? Markdown events. Uh, add two dots here. Um, so um, get status, get diff. I've added a minor change here. Minor change, as if I was working myself. But I remember, I've got her pull request checked out. Now, if I do get push, the GitHub CLI set up all the remotes and everything properly to track this pull request. And I've now pushed to Fran's fork of this repository. Um, and because of that, it's updated her pull request uh, with my file, my change, which is in this case a bit irritating. But this workflow is brilliant when you're reviewing other people's code. Because if you've got lots and lots of minor changes like wording things, instead of making loads and loads of comments on the GitHub interface or whatever, uh, if there are things you're confident about, you can just go in and you can just edit them and commit them and just push them to the pull request yourself directly, which saves everybody loads of time. Uh, because you, you don't need to wait for the other person to respond. They don't, you know, they don't need to apply all the things you've suggested. You can just do minor changes directly. And this is, of course, really good if there's multiple people working on the same pull request as well. Uh, and the GitHub command line client just takes out all the thinking, all the configuration to be able to do that. You just do GHPR, check out the number, do your work, commit push. Um, there are some cases where this won't work, but for the majority of times this works. Super, super cool. Right, um, and then quickly... I'm going to quickly just make sure that my master branch is up to, up to date with the bad fork, um, which it wasn't. GHPR checkout. Go back to fans um, pull request. And I'm going to update it now by git merge master. So I'm bringing in my master fork, which will update her, her branch. And I'm going to git push again. And um, it will push in the updates here. So but now, that's if I refresh, that should be gone. Yeah, there you go. Now her pull request is up to date. This is also really useful when there are merge conflicts, because if I'd done git merge master and there'd been merge conflicts, even really complicated ones, I could then resolve them locally in my in VS Code or what, however, um, and take as long as I want, and commit that and push it to the pull request. So that's usually how I um, resolve merge conflicts is by doing GitHub command line check out the pull request, fix it, push it. Right, um, so that's good to go. Now I can actually go a bit for the next step. I can go, I just check out master. I can now merge her pull request. I'll just give it a thumbs up. I bet I could do this. Let's see if I can do this from the command line. I bet I should be able to do it through VS Code or on the command line if I wanted to. I'm gonna review it and I'm gonna do GHPR Merge, see what happens. Merge conflict. Done. All through the command line. Pretty cool. Um, final, final thing. I'm running a bit late. Um, that's a GitHub command line. You can do loads of stuff. Look, this is all just with pull requests. Um, you can also do GHPR view. 
and minus minus web and stuff like that. Um, the GitHub command line client is loads of stuff. Um, so check it out and see if it can streamline your workflow. One of the things I also use it for is I have a couple of helpers. You might have actually seen me use one just then. Uh, I have one called uh, G Update Master, for example. You can see this in my, my dot files over here. This is a little function. Uh, all it does is it takes this argument and it pulls it from, pulls my local changes from my fork and then it pulls the changes from the upstream fork, assuming that there's an upstream. And then it pushes those changes back to my fork again. And then it cleans up any dead branches which have been merged. So that's like a little helper function, which I find really helpful. And you can see, um, maybe it doesn't. I was thinking it used the GitHub command line client. My, this one does, JHPRs. It actually uses the, the GitHub command line client here and it exports JSON and then it uses JQ to do cool stuff. So because the GitHub command line client knows your authentication, does clever stuff with JSON, you can do really powerful little bash snippets using a GitHub command line client if you want to get fancy. Um, so yeah, check out these if, if that'd be helpful for you. GS I use all the time, gupdate and gclean I use all the time. Uh, just little kind of shortcuts that your fingers get used to. Right, I've been talking too long and I'm waffling on and on and on. So let's um, let's go on and see if we have any questions or any discussion and uh, any any things that I've done badly, which you think you could do better yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Now I know what it takes <laughs> to get my my code reviewed and merged. <laughs> um, so, are there any questions in the audience? I think everyone is just amazed. <laughs> yeah. So if there are questions coming, you can always go to um, Slack and uh, in the bite size channel, or you can ask Phil directly. Um, uh, yeah, if there are no questions otherwise, then I would like to thank Phil for this um, yet another impromptu uh, bite size talk. And of course, as usual, the Chan Zagerberg Initiative for funding the talks and all of you for listening if we've got any volunteers to show me how to use git lens properly that'd be a good follow-on <laughs> talk <laughs> thanks Great.